Welcome to Package Your Genius. I'm your host, Amanda Miller Littlejohn. I'm a former print journalist turned PR and personal branding pro, and I am here to help high achievers like you bring your genius ideas to life. Whatever gift you have to give the world, I want to be a catalyst for your next genius move. If you're ready to stop overthinking it and start putting yourself out there, you're in the right place. Let's go. Have you ever caught yourself telling yourself an old story and even operating in a way that matches who you used to be? I did recently and I thought it was really interesting and I wanted to share it with you. So to give you a little background, my mom retired a couple of years ago and in the last few years, she's been living her absolute best life. She had a goal to see all of the states in the United States. And so as of today, she's seen all of the states in the lower 48. And she's officially done that. And she's planning to see Alaska and Hawaii in the next, I guess, year or so. Anyway, she left for a road trip for her birthday early last week, riding with her bestie. She was headed from Tennessee to New England. So she got to see Vermont and the Cape Cod area and Maine. Apparently, Maine is really beautiful. So I need to add that to my list. But anyway... Hearing about her adventure got me feeling kind of envious, but also just like wanting to take off down the road with her. So I want to take a road trip to New England just to explore the country and see what all is here. And when she initially told me about the trip, I remember catching myself getting wistful, thinking I sure wish I could take off for 10 days at my own pace to see the sights. And I sure wish I could spend that kind of time with my mom. But I can't do that because of the kids, I immediately told myself. Because for the last decade plus, that's really been my default reason whenever I get too excited about doing something or going somewhere that will take me away from D.C. Because the kids have to get to and from school and my husband travels a lot for work. So I need to make sure my calendar is pretty clear or at the very least that he'll be in town if I'm planning to be away. But is that true? Really? Is it really true that I can't come and go and take off on a road trip because of the kids? At this point, my kids are managing their chores, bathing themselves, even feeding themselves with only light oversight. They know how to catch public transportation if they need to. They know how to cook a few items if they need to. And of course, they're still kids and need emotional support, a lot of refereeing because they fight all the time, and just general parenting and coaching and guidance. But for the most part, I have to tell you, I've really hit my stride as a mom. And I'm gonna dust my shoulders off for that. Um, and with their new school that I've mentioned here on the podcast before, and the support from the school community and other parents, it really takes that whole I can't be away from the kids excuse off the table for me. But initially, when my mom told me about her trip, it was my immediate default reaction. And looking over the last 10 days, when I look at my calendar, I totally could have joined her. And so this made me think about defaults, like our default mindset, reason, what's in our heads about who we are, and what we can do. Because even when our situations change, oftentimes because we've been grinding to bring on that change over time, our minds can still lag behind. So it's kind of like muscle memory, which I talked about in a previous episode. If we have leaned on a reason for long enough, it can become our default without us even realizing it. So what ends up happening is we're making these broad assumptions based on the default decisions of our past that used to serve us. So it's easier for your brain to go on autopilot because of muscle memory, right? Because that uses up much less energy, but sometimes that autopilot needs reprogramming. 
For example, say you have a seafood allergy as a child. So even though you love lobster and crab, you avoid seafood restaurants because you know the food will make you sick. But then you go for an annual checkup as an adult and you find out you've outgrown your seafood allergy and now you can eat all of the lobster that you want. Now you love seafood, but even after learning that you're no longer allergic, when it comes time to plan dinner or to choose a restaurant for a date night, your brain automatically removes any seafood options by default, even though you're no longer allergic to seafood. That's what I mean. And we do it all the time. But our situations change, right? So even if you haven't outgrown an old reason like I have with my kids being why I can't travel, you may be coming up with reasons that match a mindset you held in the past that you don't hold anymore. Or maybe you're coming up with reasons that match like the physical reality of your past or your economic reality of your past that is no longer relevant or true today. So for example, another example rather, I'm going to a conference in a few weeks in Richmond, Virginia, and I knew what hotel I wanted to stay at. So I went to their website to book a room. When I went to book the room, they didn't have the dates that I wanted. So I started doing research on other hotels that fit my preferences. I started going down the rabbit hole, you know how it is, until it dawned on me that I don't have to do this. I have an admin. Let me let her do this so I can go do something else. And she's way better at finding things like this anyway. Now, the thing with my admin is I'm really getting much better about having her do things for my business, for my students and clients. But I always forget that she can help me with some of the more personal administrative things too. And having spent my entire life doing personal administrative stuff for myself and having to do so much administrative stuff for the family. It's just really easy to forget that I have help. So my default in that situation was I have to find a hotel myself. And then I reframed that to I have support. So for me, it requires practice to reframe when I catch myself operating in a way that may or may not Uh, be true or operating in a way that's based on something that may or may not be true. So I want you to think about some of the default um, modes of operation that you may be adopting. And I have a couple of more defaults and reframes to share with you so you can brainstorm for yourself. So here are a few more of my defaults plus reframes. So number one, default, I don't have time to write. You've heard me talk about all of this writing and finding time. So you you may have been prepared for that one. So the default is I don't have time to write. The reframe is I've set my business and life up in a way that I have ample time to write. So it's kind of like an affirmation, but I see it as a little more nuanced than an affirmation because it's me checking myself and checking like my past story or not even my past story, my past reality. I haven't in the past, I really haven't had a ton of time, but now I have more time so I can make it happen. Number two, second default. I have to put off large purchases uh, for the future or I have to put off large purchases until a future time, I guess when I can afford things. My reframe is I am not just starting out I have considerably more financial resources. I can buy it now. And I recently found myself having to reframe myself around that. I was thinking about buying some furniture and I was like, oh, well, maybe I will. And I'm like, why am I hemming and hawing over uh, making the decision to buy something that's pricier? I have it like I can buy this. But it's just so easy when you're used to saving or thinking, okay, If I want this expensive thing, I can't have it yet. It's just like a default habit, Um, which actually isn't terrible because you end up being frugal. But still, you have to check yourself like, is it that I can't afford this or can I afford it? And I'm just used to telling myself that I can't. Third deframe, default. I can't pick up and drive to New York City on a whim. Now, I may have mentioned to you before that I am not. Okay, 
I'm not even going to say that because that's not true, right? I got to reframe in the moment. Up until about a month ago, I did not consider myself a long distance driver. So the farthest I would drive alone on the interstate would be a couple of hours before I felt like, you know, road anxiety is what I called it. Like I just, it's just too much. Um, And so recently I took a road trip to visit my grandmother and it was a long road trip and I thought I was going to have to break it up because it was a little over 10 hours, but I did it in one shot. I just got up early and um, got on the road before the sun came up and was able to make it happen. And that really built my confidence and helped me reframe internally that maybe in the past I was not you know, a skilled enough driver or my nerves were too bad or I'm just like on high alert or whatever the case was that made me not feel comfortable driving. That is not necessarily true anymore. I was fine. I had a good time. I had my music going and I stayed in the left lane for most of the trip, which I was laughing to my mom about because uh, if you know me and have ever been in a car with me, I'm like, queen of the right lane but I stayed in the left lane people were moving out of my way so I felt kind of powerful and accomplished um, on that trip so anyway my default in the past because I have friends in New York City and there's tons of media opportunities and just different things happening in New York City but I always tell myself I have to catch the train and I love catching the train because it gives me a chance to think and write and sleep and listen to podcasts and just chill and not have to worry about the road But if I needed to get there quickly and I wanted to go spur of the moment, my reframe is I feel confident driving long distances on my own now. When are we leaving? Uh, Number four, my fourth default, I have to know all of the answers and do all of the thinking work when it comes to my clients. So in the past year, I'm really excited to have added some people to my team who support my clients in the work we're doing for Package or Genius Academy and Maximum Exposure. And particularly with Maximum Exposure, it requires a lot of strategy and thinking to brainstorm story angles and news hooks and do research for uh, media contacts and and to write the actual email pitches that our students send out to land their placements. And so on the one hand, that can sound like a lot of work for one person to do. And in the past, I would think, oh, my God, I have all of these all of this work I have to do and I and it's all on me and I have to think and it's up to me to come up with all the ideas and be creative and and brainstorm and and think of all the angles right and so it could start to feel a little overwhelming but that's not the reality anymore so my reframe is I have two other brilliant communications coaches working in my program they have amazing ideas and strategies to share they are here to empower my clients right? I love that. And this last one is actually not even my reframe, but I was talking to a friend who is about to start a new job and she had positioned her start date in a way so that she'd have time to just, you know, rest, relax and get her mind in the right place for this new chapter and for this new role. She also has to move. So she's leaving She's leaving one home and she's moving to another city, but it's only a few hours away. And so um, we were talking about the time that she has left before her start date. And I was saying, well, how, you know, I know you wanted to get some r and I know you wanted to get some relaxation in. What's on the agenda? Like, what do you have planned to really refresh yourself before your start date? comes up because you have a couple more weeks and I could hear kind of the heaviness in her voice because she has yet to pack and move and you know that's going to be a heavy lift and time kind of got away from her and she hadn't made any plans and so we were kind of talking about the opportunity of this time because she so rarely gets long stretches of time where she can you know go on a retreat or just take some time for herself so 
she said, you know, well, now I have to focus on moving. So I don't have time anymore. And I felt like her default was I only have a few more weeks before I start my new job, even though I had planned to do some self care, travel somewhere restorative and rest, I will have to spend the rest of my time off moving and getting settled. So my reframe for her was, I can get the help that I need to pack up my things and get this move done in a weekend and use the rest of my time off for me. So I know it's like when we have these things looming over our heads, we can almost make them seem bigger than they are or bigger than they need to be. You know, it's going to take longer than it than it has to take. In actuality, like I've moved before, you've moved before. If you if you're focused and you decide, okay, I only have these two days to get it done, you'll get it done, right? But if you give yourself longer, you'll take longer. And so you know, I think that that's a helpful reframe when you're thinking about time and you're thinking about like all the things that you have to do, especially your to do list. Like, oh, I can't go to the movies or oh, I can't hang out with my friends because of, I have all of this work to do. But really, if you got focused, could you get your work done in a 90 minute block? and then still have time for your family or your friends or whatever it is that you wanted to do. I think oftentimes because we procrastinate and we're putting things off, we mentally make them take longer than they have to. So anyway, those are some defaults and reframes from both my life and the life of those I love. Um, so whenever you get that, oh, I have to do X feeling or sense of wistfulness that I described when you think, wow, I really wish I could do A, but I can't because of B. I want you to ask yourself, do you really? Do you really have to do that? Is there not another way that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish? And how can you remove this reason or this excuse as a barrier to your real goals and where you really want to be putting your energy? So, I'm interested to hear what you are going to reframe or what your defaults are. I am going to be on the lookout for the rest of the week for more of mine. Um, Another default that I had was I have to wait until the end of the day to uh, catalog all of my insights and think of one brilliant thing to share on the podcast. So I'm going to record the podcast at night. And I reframed that earlier today after I realized that Um, I start to lose energy later in the day. I'm best in the morning and I do my thinking and writing and journaling time in the morning, but, um, I kind of saved the podcast. I had been in the habit of saving the podcast until the evening because I wanted to see, well, what's going to happen today that's going to give me my episode idea. And I just decided to reframe that today because as the day goes on and it gets darker, I just really lose energy. And so, why not um, try to get that recorded earlier? Like I don't have to record it at night. I don't have to wait until the end of the day. And quite frankly, I typically decide what I want to talk about in the morning when I'm doing my journaling and reflection time. And so if I can get that done prior to, you know, going to pick up the kids, um, I'm in a better space, in a better place. So That's a simple and very recent reframe as of today (laughs) that I made. So I'm curious to hear what have been some of the defaults that you're acting on that don't serve you. And then how are you reframing that with your current reality, especially if things have changed in your life? So as I've mentioned before, enrollment is underway for Package Your Genius Academy and Maximum Exposure. Oh my gosh, so I told you that we were interviewing the New York Times editor for Maximum Exposure and we met with her on yesterday and it was incredible. And we're so excited because one of our students' uh, submissions, one of the pitches that we crafted during the program and submitted to the New York Times editor for her review was accepted. And it's now in the process of making its rounds through the editorial department and will hopefully be published uh, in the next couple of months. Apparently, there's a big backlog of op eds because um, a lot of academics apparently submit op eds in September. So 
that's very, 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 very exciting news. So cross your fingers and send us good energy for that. We are still enrolling for both programs, the Packager Genius Personal Branding Academy. It's our Visibility Academy. It's really how we help you get clear on what should be your focus area for your brand and how do you package that and communicate that and start to share it with the world as well as maximum exposure, which is for established personal brands. So if you've been working in your space for some time and you're clear on what you do and what value you offer and you just want more people to know it, you want that credibility, you want to grow your podcast audience or you want to reach more readers for your book and you know you've got to get in front of more than just the people who know you now, you've got to get in front of new faces, new ears, get new people seeing you and hearing um, the amazing things that you're doing. Maximum exposure may just be for you, but you can learn about both programs at PackageYourGeniusAcademy.com. I hope this episode and the insights I've shared today have helped you uh, think about yourself and how you can package your genius moving forward. I'll see you next time. Bye.